So, the first thing to do is anchor points. I've already set up mine, but let me show you what they should be. Front arm, top of the arm. Front brow, on it. Front ear hair, right in the middle there. Front ear at the base of the ear. Nose mouth, on either one. Mouth back, there. Front pupil should be in the middle. Front eye white should be in the middle. Front eye bag, this thing should be in the middle. Head shade, doesn't really matter because it's going to be parented to the head. The head should rotate from the neck. Body should rotate from the waist. Back ear should rotate from the bottom of the back ear. Front leg from the top of the front leg. Tail from the base. Back leg from the top. And back arm from the top of the arm. The next stage is parenting. So let's parent all of the things on the head to the head. The front brow, front ear, mouth back, front eye bag, and head shade should all be parented to the head, as should the back ear. The other things on the head that aren't parented to the head have other things to be parented to. So for instance, the front ear hair should just be parented to the front ear. The nose mouth should just be parented to the mouth back, because they're attached. Front pupil should be parented to the white, and the white should be parented to the bag. So this one, to this one, to this one, and then to the head. The tail should be parented to the body. The head should be parented to the body too. And the legs don't need to be parented to anything. The back arm and the front arm should also be parented to the body. The next step is to add the puppet pin tool to the limbs and also the body. Front arm, three points, the top, middle, and bottom. Same with the other arm. Top, middle, bottom. Try and keep some space from the edge, otherwise something weird happens. The front leg. Top, middle, bottom. The back leg. Top, middle, bottom. And also the body. Now, we are able to bend the limbs and the body. So let's bend the body into a better pose because this one is quite shit. There we go, now he looks a bit better. Move the head a bit. Next up, we need to get the body and head moving up and down position. In one loop, you need it to move up and down twice. So, we'll be down, up here, down again, and up again. F9, easy ease. So, up, down, up, down. That'll be a loop. Let's rotate it backwards, so that when he goes up, he will rotate backwards. Copy these frames. Easy. Ease. So now, when he moves up, he leans backwards. Let's also get the head rotating backwards. So, add on to that. And then back down. And then easy ease. So now, the body is rotating and going up, and the head is rotating back. We should also maybe affect the position of the head. So when it goes up, it's a little bit further up. Bring it back down. So now we have some healthy movement. Now it's time to get those limbs moving. Front arm, rotate. That should be its beginning pose. 
here it will be over here and then back to the original f9 you see that do the same to the back arm except it will be facing forwards when that one is facing backwards. Let's see how that looks. Now it's time for the legs. First of all we'll do the front leg. Go along to where the body is highest, and this is where the leg will be straightest. So let's make some keyframes there. This is where the back leg will be straightest, and therefore where the knee will be brought forward. Okay, so it goes straight, bent up like that, and then the final pose, which will be the first pose as well, should be where it makes impact with the ankle on the floor. So let's move this, move the knee, and then copy and paste these last keyframes to the first. And the loop is set. There we have a one-legged walk cycle. Let's do exactly the same thing with the back leg and then we're going to shift the keyframes so that it's alternating legs. So make it look exactly the same as the front. Forwards just use it as a guide. Forwards, straight, back, bent. And the same as the beginning. Copy the first frames and paste them at the end. Now what we're going to do is because they're exactly the same, we're going to copy and paste these frames so it's double the length. Then we're going to shift the frames backwards so that it's in time. So for instance when the front leg will be forward that's when the back leg will be back. So let's see how that looks. There we have a walk cycle. Now, this walk cycle may be good for your gran, but you are a professional animator, and there's various things that can make a simple walk cycle like this look a lot more professional. For instance, you can get the head turning, make it look sort of 3D. You can also accentuate the movement of the legs and the arms, get a little bit of depth, get a little bit of a turn in there. This is the difference between a good walk cycle and a better walk cycle. Here we go. First of all, we're going to accentuate the arms as they swing. So pull up the front arms keyframes. This is going to rotate a little bit more than it needs to. Look at this. Right there. And then return back to the first. F9. It's rotated a bit more, it's sort of bending the arm. Maybe we can even pull back the arm at the beginning and last frame. Make it swing a little bit. Copy and paste that keyframe to there. Now look at that. That is fucking glorious. Let's do the same to the back arm. Get the keyframes up there. This one. Further forward. 
go to the middle, make it go back, even though we can't see it, but you're a professional animator, Ross. Do something good. Jesus. F9. There we go. It's a little bit better, but we can make it better. Let's move the front arm. The entire thing. Position. When it goes forwards, we're going to move it right. There you go. It's only subtle, but it adds to the whole depth illusion. F9. Now it moves a bit forward. You see that? You can fucking see it, can't you? Back arm. Do the same. Let's move it back. And then let's copy that first frame back there. F9. Now we've got a little bit more of a turn on the body. Let's do some shit to the legs. So front leg. This top keyframe can be moved around. So when it's forward, move it a little bit more forward. There is in the middle. There it's probably back a little bit. There we'll return to the middle again. And that we will just copy the beginning frame and put it at the end so that it's all the same. There we go. Now the leg is moving a little bit extra. Let's do the same to the back leg. So that's there. Moves a bit forward. Move it a bit forward. Actually keep it around. Yeah. Copy and paste the beginning keyframe. Actually, because it's so far backwards, let's move it fucking backwards. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fucking gypsy. Okay. So, it moves backwards when the leg moves backwards. It moves forward when the leg moves forward. That's just one simple thing you can add to the depth. Next up, let's turn the head. Let's say we'll start with the eyes. Okay, so the front bag controls the whole eye. The pupil is parented to the white and the white is parented to the bag. Therefore, the bag, if you move the bag, it's going to move the whole fucking eye. So, when a head turns, it usually turns towards the arm that is turning backwards. So, for instance, the arm is backwards here, and therefore the eye is the furthest backwards on the head that it's going to be. So let's go halfway through and push the eye forwards, because that will accentuate the head turning. Let's also change the scale ever so slightly thinner than at the beginning. Copy and paste the beginning keyframes so that it returns F9. There we've got a subtle bit of turning on the head. The front ear. Let's push that forward with the eye. Not too far, but uh, just enough for your eye to see. Turning. It's turning. Is it turning? It looks like it's turning. Let's just say it's turning. Back ear. Now the back ear is going to go the opposite way because it's on the opposite side of the head. Look at that. So when the front ear goes forward, the back ear goes backwards. And then it will return to the beginning. F9. Little bit of a turn there. Okay. Let's add some movement on the brow position. Let's move it along with the eye. But what you can see there is that it needs to be scaled. S for scale. Go to the middle. U to bring up all of the keyframes. And let's make it thinner. As if it's turned. And then bring it back to its original. So 
So now it's still above the eye and it's slightly turning. The mouth back controls the nose and mouth. So if I move it over here, it's going to move over there. Position. Let's move it ever so slightly to the right. Ever so slightly. Move it back at the end. F9. Let's scale it. Let's scale it the tiniest amount. Maybe 98. Return it back to 100. F9. Okay, at this point we have all of the movement that we need. It's just a case of adding extra tiny details like delay on some movements and just extra turn on other things. The ear hair could be slightly moved. So when it goes forwards, the ear hair can move slightly there. And then move it back. Just subtle things like maybe let's have a little bit of rotation on the ear. I say rotate it backwards by one frame minus one and then it will come forward and then it will go back back to minus one there we go f9 let's scale the nose and mouth so that they look a bit thinner just by a tiny fraction 92 percent there back to 100 copy the beginning Okay, let's delay the rotation of some things. For instance, the head isn't going to rotate at exactly the same time as the body. Things have delay. So the head is going to be one frame behind the body. Copy and paste the rotation frames so that there's more of them. And what we need to do is shift them to the right, but obviously there's nothing before them. So we're gonna shift them all here so it's exactly the same as it was, and then just shift them all right, alt, right. And now, it's slightly delayed. Let's also add a little bit extra movement on the legs. Just pushing it that little bit more forward and then that little bit more backwards. To give that feeling of depth. So this, these are the keyframes for the hands. Let's copy and paste them. Move them all back here and then Move them forward by one. Delay them by one frame. Now the... Hand is delayed by one frame. Let's do the same to the back. Move the mouth a bit more forward when it goes forward. Perfect! Come back next time and I'll show you a few ways of making 2D heads look 3D. I'm Ross Plasco, see you in the next lecture.